So I was told not to start my talk with a bad joke, but I gotta be honest with you guys, I have a bone to pick with Jurassic Park. It wasn't that bad, okay? In the original movie, there's a scene where uh, Jeff Goldblum's character attempts to explain chaos theory. His description really misses the mark. Viewers are left with this impression that chaos is all about how complex system inevitably descends into chaos and disorder. Of course, this is used to foreshadow all the dinosaurs breaking loose and wreaking havoc on the island. Spoiler alert. I'm not happy with this part of the movie because it sends the wrong message about what chaos is. As a scientific concept, chaos is actually beneficial. Admittedly, it took me a while to come to this realization. I first came across chaos in the physics lab as part of my quantum chaos research. But I soon came to realize through insights from other fields that chaos can be a wonderful thing. So, to understand why, let's first talk about the scientific definition of chaos. Because when researchers refer to chaos, they don't mean just any type of randomness or disorder. Scientists use chaos to refer to the butterfly effect, which is this idea that a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil can create a hurricane in Texas. Decades of research has shown that weather patterns are sensitive to minute disturbances. So something as small as a butterfly could create a hurricane. It works in the reverse, too. A butterfly could stop a hurricane from forming as well. Another really exciting part about chaos is that it crops up all over our lives, from the stock market to wildlife populations to the motion of amusement park rides. Now, I'm a bit of a visual learner, so let's take a look at an example of chaos and the butterfly effect in action. So you're about to see a simulation of a triple pendulum. When I press play on the simulation, you notice that it moves in a complicated way. But if we wait for a moment, we notice that we aren't watching one pendulum. We're actually watching 42 pendulums. It all started with slightly different initial positions. If we see this simulation from the beginning again, we see how these differences in initial positions, which start out imperceptible, grow into enormously different future trajectories for all these pendulums. And that is what chaos is all about, these tiny differences having a huge effect on a system's future. There's another super fascinating part of chaos that we haven't talked about yet, and that's that chaos can be a limit on our ability to predict the future. Now, to understand why, let's think about that pendulum example a little more. To predict the future of the pendulum, we need to know where it started. But we can never be exactly sure where the pendulum began. The laws of physics require that every measurement has some amount of uncertainty associated with it. This is a big problem for chaotic systems, because as we saw in the case of the pendulum, a tiny difference in the initial position had a huge effect on the future motion of that pendulum. And that makes a big problem if we have a tiny bit of uncertainty. It will grow exponentially and prevent us from accurately making a prediction of the future of the pendulum or of any chaotic system. By their very nature, chaotic systems are incredibly difficult to predict. Chaos has many applications beyond just physics. It turns out that our social lives, to some extent, are chaotic. To demonstrate this point, I'll need your help. By show of hands, who here is married, engaged, or dating someone? For all the single people out there, you can see me after the show. <laughs> okay, so for everyone who had their hands up, I want you to think. How did you meet your significant other? Was it just a matter of being in the right room at the right time? Would things have been different if your plane was on time, or if you turned down that party invitation, or if, say, you were in a bad mood and decided to swipe left? Even if you don't personally have a story like this, odds are your parents or your grandparents met through some chance encounter. The smallest of happenstances can have a huge impact on how we spend, who we spend the rest of our lives with. And that is how chaos enters our personal lives. 
This is also how chaos can be an unsettling idea to consider. Some incredibly important aspects of our personal lives are determined by minor circumstances beyond our control. This leads to a negative type of thinking that we see in Jurassic Park. We can never keep track of every metaphorical butterfly, and all carefully laid plans are vulnerable to minor circumstances. But I soon came to realize that chaos can actually be healthy and empowering. And perhaps the best example of that has been under our noses the whole time. Now, to be exact, I mean under our noses and a bit to the left. The human heart has a measurable degree of chaos in its rhythm. This might sound surprising at first, but there's a good reason for it. Some researchers believe that this is an evolutionary advantage. To see why, let's imagine that we are hunter-gatherers out looking for food. If we all of a sudden stumble across a predator, in that moment we need to go from a resting heart rate to a rapid heart rate in a moment's notice. That's really difficult for non-chaotic systems. Non-chaotic systems have a hard time changing their repetition rate. But a system with some amount of chaos is sensitive to the signals that we send it, allowing it to change its repetition rate on a dime. And that's how chaos can save our lives. It allows the heart to be able to react to a changing environment. This example is not isolated. Healthy systems have been shown to exhibit chaos in economics, ecology, and computation. Too much chaos, of course, can be a problem. Now, if our heart didn't have a regular rhythm, that'd be hard for us to sustain many of our daily activities. But some amount of chaos and some amount of regularity, a balance often referred to as the edge of chaos, appears to create optimal outcomes. And so we should think about how we can apply this lesson to our own lives. Some amount of chaos and some amount of regularity appears to be a good thing. So we should see how we can balance those two. It's okay to rely on routines and traditions to draw strength, while also making sure that we have the time to put ourselves out there into the world and see what surprising opportunities our chaotic world provides. After all, chaos is how people make important business connections. It's how people win the lottery. And for many people, it's how they fall in love. As crazy as it sounds, I think we should embrace the edge of chaos in our lives. Thank you.